Hey everybody, it's Brian with Team Aquascape. I'm back at my office because I'm going over some old videos. And I say old videos because they're videos I took like six, seven, this one in particular almost eight months ago. I went on a consultation about eight months ago and every single time I finish a consultation, I record everything that the homeowner and I went over. So where's the biofall is gonna go? Where's the skimmer gonna go? How big is the pond gonna be? How deep is the pond gonna be? Any little special things like where should I move grass to? Where should I move transplant plants to, et cetera, et cetera. So this video, I wanna take you through that whole game plan video that I use that I pass off to Jack, our foreman out on a job site, or whoever the foreman's gonna be, but in this case, Jack. That way he can get started and actually finish the project from start to end without me even being there. The other reason I take the video is, like I said before, so I don't forget anything. If we're bidding out a project and we're not gonna to get to it for six, seven, eight months, sometimes even a year or two years later, I wanna make sure I don't forget a single single little thing because those details are what matter the most. It's always that last 10%. We're gonna jump into this project and take you step by step on how we build an 11 by 14 foot pond. We are gonna build a pondless waterfall. The best way to learn anything is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. All right, Jack, this one's gonna be fun because it's just gonna fit the space so nice. We have an 11 by 14 foot, 11 this way, 14 foot this way. You can see the amoebic shape. We're gonna come into the patio, take that bite out of the patio. We'll bring some wall stone. It comes back into this cove in here. Later, they're gonna get another evergreen. That good sits kind of back in there just so this trio kind of happens. More than likely get a spillway bowl falling out of this little cove for circulation. Skimmer box is sitting over here. He's got already electric run. We come back over here, you can see the cove for the waterfall. Bio Falls is sitting about five feet off the edge. I've painted out where the berm's gonna go. We'll have to bring the sod cutter to strip out that perimeter of grass. It should come all the way back like this, back and through here, and then kind of taper into this section here. We're gonna do another bowl, incorporate it in with the waterfall someplace, collect all of these boulders. We can use them as accents, use them in retaining purposes, but we'll definitely reuse them. And I'm leaning towards like a little beachy type area over in here, just so this area feels a little different. We can repurpose the grasses. They're the Carl Forrester grasses. We can repurpose them back up on the berm. They got a couple daylilies there. This hydrangea can get repurposed back over in there. We should be good. Just don't forget the wall stone. We've got easy, easy access. He's got a double gate right there. 20 mats to come through here. Dirt is being delivered. They'll be able to drop the dirt out on the blacktop over there and we'll just run that back with wheelbarrows. We've got all this access through here. They know there'll be a little bit of grass damage in through here. I'm not worried about the machine running running straight through here just on the turns. So we should be really good. Excited. Definitely bring uh, some plumbing stuff for the double bowl manifolds and you know, ball valves, etc. but they'll be on the order. All right, bud. All right, so right now you guys can say this is a 6,000 biofalls and it's sunk halfway in the ground. And right now it looks super small, but just wait until we start digging out this pond and you guys can see how grand this waterfall looks with it only being 15 inches high. We measured it from this point here to the top of that biofall and it's 15 inches. So stay tuned to see how that looks. Well, there goes the first scoop. We are running a little behind schedule for the day, but ever since we got here, we are cruising right along. We have our biofall set. Plumbing is trenched in all the way to over there. And Brian just took the first scoop of dirt. So we're gonna scratch this pond out and get it all shaped out to go as soon as we get far enough away from the skimmer area. Chris and Tyler are gonna start skimmer set so then that way we can hook up the rest of the plumbing. moving right along kind of cool they made the pond bigger than what we originally planned we originally planned on doing like an 8 by 12 foot pond we made it 11 by 14 they heard from all of our past customers the one thing you should do is make the pond as big as you possibly can and i think it fits into this space really really nice so we're down two feet deep we got a skimmer box over there jack's gone ahead and done some of the plumbing stuff already getting ready for a spillway bowl that's going to fit over in here and we're going to do something a little unique with that bowl this time compared to what we normally do. We're retrofitting an old fire bowl and turning it into something different. And then we're gonna do another bowl and my thought is to put it right up over in here, kind of framing out the waterfall. So we're almost ready for our fabric. Fabric goes in, liner goes in, and then all of those boulders. Can't wait to see this one finished. It's gonna be a pretty awesome transformation. Other thing we've got going on here is the prep for all of this stone here is going right into this area here. So we're gonna do a vertical wall out of our Unilock 
black block wall here. It's gonna come straight up and then this patio will come out over the top of it. So instead of using boulders and trying to stack up boulders all the way up, getting them perfectly level for a patio to come out over the top, we can use this stuff to get them perfectly level, much easier, much more efficiently, and it looks clean, nice and neat right off of the formal patio. That'll make a little bit more sense as Jack and Billy start putting that stuff together. How good they are at shoveling though, like incredible. <laughs> coming together. You can see Tyler's at the point where we're washing stuff down. Jack's already working on edges. Billy's working on edges. Just got this waterfall to build. We do have a water truck coming, which is like totally overkill for this small pond, but their well water is so bad that that's just what we chose to do. You can also see this wall is in now. So there's the wall. You can see we've got a course down into that trough, which allowed us to bring this up right to the level we need to be at. And we'll end up bringing that brick right over the top of this and finishing that off nice and clean. So that'll look great. It allows that big steep area right off the edge of the pond, which will allow the fish then to come that much closer. Trying to do this out of boulders like that and still bring the brick right up to it makes it really difficult. I just love how clean this looks. So we'll get a better example of that when we finish this off with the brick. You can see everything up there is doing well. Just about ready to eat lunch. So we'll come back and we'll start going over that waterfall. touch overkill. The biggest garden hose ever filling up. I'm guessing it's probably only like 800 gallons. But as he's filling, what we're doing is draining out some of the muddy water here, just so when we turn it on, this thing is absolutely spotless. The thing is, is no matter how much we try to rinse this thing down, when we turn on the waterfall, no matter what, it's gonna get a little cloudy. Waterfalls is being done. Now you see that spillway bowl in there. Jack's figure fixing up the fire area there. Love the way that sits just off the side of the biofalls. It's even gonna look better once we get a boulder back behind it over there, get this boulder back and through here, a couple accents in there. It's just gonna look like it's all part of the same thing. Waterfall, super simple at 15 inches, but it's gonna look really dramatic. Jack talked earlier about just how big that it will actually look when the, the berm and the plants and all that stuff get in there. And exciting news, they're gonna have us do some landscaping. So we'll get to get a couple plants in here and get everything buttoned up. Things are moving along. This is going in here. And then this bowl, you can see we pulled out the guts of the fire install because the fire, it was a discontinued one. The fire part didn't work. So we're just going to load that up with a bunch of miscellaneous plants I got over here and turn that into a planter, which should look really nice and kind of accentuate this one and kind of tie it all together. In fact, he likes it so much, he might actually do another bowl over here in the future. So we've got it set up to do that. While Jack's finishing up setting these spillway bowls, let's jump over to Chris. He can show you a little bit bit more detail on how we set these bowls in their proper depth. What is up everybody? Chris back here from Team Aquascape out in the field and today we are going to be swapping out a spillway basin bowl which is the water bowl that has the water that shoots up and overflows it on 360 degrees of the bowl for one of the fire and water spillway bowls. So it's the exact same bowl except for this one has a fire element added in so it's going to be a nice little change. We're going to be swapping it out eye for an eye so you guys can see the difference of one to the other and it should be a pretty seamless transition being that the framework is already there. We're literally going to pull one out and put the other one right back in. Same footprint, just adding fire to this water element. You guys ready? Let's do it. Okay, so here's that spillway basin bowl that we're going to be swapping out. We're going to be putting in a fire and a water spillway bowl. We've got the box right here, but this is, go ahead and turn this over, this thing out. Here is that fire and water spillway basin that we're going to be installing. This is the element that we're going to be swapping out for that spillway bowl right there. So literally it's the same dimension, same plumbing connection, all that stuff, but this has a propane line that's also attached to it and that's this cabling right here and I'll show you that here in a second but first thing we're gonna do is get this bowl drained we're gonna go ahead and let that water drain down and then we'll spin this bowl off of there get it out pull back some of this cobble and gravel we're gonna have to elevate the bowl a little bit because we don't want the bottom of that bowl to 
sit too deep underwater because there is some electrical components inside of that that can fry if underwater. So you wanna be careful, and I'll show you that when we install it, where to run that water line to. So I'm gonna put the camera down, get this thing out while this thing is draining, get all of the guts and components and that kind of stuff kind of set off to the side, get rid of this, and then we'll go ahead and get going. All right, so we've got the two spillway bowls now swapped out. This one is now plumbed using the existing plumbing that we had. We just simply added the union and an elbow and a couple few extra inches of one inch flex PVC, but we've got it all plumbed. But I wanted to show you guys how deep you wanna actually put this bowl in the water. So it's actually a heck of a lot less than you would think. So I just wanted to show this so that you guys avoid making any mistakes and damaging the internal components that actually controls the fire portion of this feature. So let me just turn the camera on and show you where we're at. So these are little ventilation holes right in here. If you guys can see that, right about here is where water line is. So there's a black box that's underneath and what you wanna do is you wanna avoid that thing ever coming in contact with water. So the water level in the pond should never get any higher than this. There is an overflow. The way I established where water level was is I took the algae line and marked it on a series of rocks so you can see where that green line is. That's actually my algae line and that comes right to about there. So you can see the feet of this bowl is going to be just below water. So I like to have this thing nestled under the water but unfortunately or the way the components go together in this thing it doesn't allow me to sink it any further down. So just want to make sure that you don't set this thing too deep and end up frying all of the internal guts on this fire bolt. So just wanted to give you guys a heads up. You also want to make sure that these air holes are out of water in case there's any gas buildup inside. It does have an area to escape. This is that one inch flex that's coming from a two inch trunk line. And you see I've got a union there in case I ever have to swap this bolt out. It'll just make things a heck of a lot easier. We just have to pull out a handful of cobbles and gravel and make that happen. And then it just elbows up into that three quarter threaded. So I ended up reducing down from one inch to three quarter, which will be more than enough water for this bolt. Hope that makes sense. But I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing kind of finished up, hide these little cables here. This is my gas line and then the power line going to the control box. And then we'll get everything hooked up, hook it up to propane, and we'll go ahead and test around this thing. All right, so there you have it. Literally an eye for an eye. We swapped it out, it's the same footprint, but you can see it is elevated compared to what it was originally installed. But there is that view from the bottom. You can see that the water still has to come up about, gosh, only about a quarter to the three eighths of an inch. So the bottom of that bowl is completely out of water. You can see we've got water coming down over the sides. It's a much more diffused effect than it was. But at nighttime, when that thing is lit up, it looks absolutely spectacular. There's a, a three watt light that's underneath that lily pad that will shine up and hit this bowl, but it just looks absolutely stunning. Very, very cool. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little snippet of the episode. As you can see, it's a fairly easy and also quick alteration to a water feature. So even if you already had the spillway basin bowl, this might be a nice little add-on for you to suggest to your customers to bring that fire and water element to their water feature if they don't already have it. Plumbing is identical. The only thing you have to do is get that gas line and the electrical cable going to the control center that controls the gas and fire portion of this feature up and out of the pond. Make sure it doesn't get clogged. Make sure no water gets in the line. But this is such a cool addition to any water feature. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you guys next time. So Billy's about to mortar our bricks in and get this patio all finished off. I ran to uh, grab some plants and that is gonna make this thing pop. I cannot wait to have some color. I know we have some color right there already. We got those grasses that the homeowner had before, but we have a wheelbarrow full of plants that we're gonna start scattering out around here and we're gonna be able to finish, finish this thing. So it's gonna be super nice for you guys, especially that way you guys can see a huge transformation from what this yard looked like to what it looks like now. So stay tuned and see what happens. I hear that. And what is that? Sound of water. We finally got this pond wrapped up. It took us a little bit longer than expected. Ran into a few hiccups here and there, but it turned out absolutely spectacular. And what a gorgeous day for us to turn this wonderful waterfall on. So let's spin you around and show you.
why don't you kind of give a, a rundown of everything that we have going on out here? So yeah, basically we have a 11 by 14 footprint. We took a bite out of this patio here. I did a formal wall. I think we did that down at an 18 inch depth. Nice little cascading waterfall. We have a two fire bowls. We converted one of them into a little planter. And then the other one up at the top actually has fire going there. Bio falls in the back and the pump is a four to seven. Uh, we have color change of lights in this feature. Uh, it's wish we were here at nighttime to see what it looks like, but I think it turned out awesome. It's beautiful. I love the granite boulders and yeah. I couldn't agree. You have been a, a tremendous help to Brian and I out here. I know Brian had a lot of loose ends. So it was nice to kind of have you out here to kind of support and lend another helping hand. So really appreciate you being out here as always. And let's spin you guys around and show you what we got going on. So as you walk in, you have this awesome patio that we ended up coming out here and pulling apart a good portion of this patio. This was a squared off patio. So we ended up pulling this out all the way out to these bricks all the way out here. We ended up doing our brick wall, as you can see right back there. And then Billy did a tremendous job at cutting all these super fine cuts. I mean, it took him a while just to do all this finicky work, but it's the last 10% as we like to say. But we got our two pieces of granite off the side, kind of flanking everything. And then that allows this soldier course to butt into that rock there. So good job, Billy. Did a tremendous job on that, as I said earlier, but this is the pond. So it's a little murky right now. And that's just because of all the dust and mud that was out here this entire week, but it'll clear up. We have coming right off the edge, it's just straight 18 inches down. And then we have a little two foot section down in this area here. So that'll be nice if they add fish that they can overwinter over them. And I know they were talking about adding fish, which is funny because when we started this job, they weren't really sure if they wanted fish. But we have our skimmer 1000 sitting in the corner that houses our four to seven pump. And then our two inch line goes to a manifold system over there with three ball valves, one for this spill bowl that we converted into a little plant pocket. And that is because we didn't want a fire feature in this area because of these arbs are gonna get pretty big. And eventually this bowl is gonna be nestled back underneath these arbs. And if obviously if we have a fire feature, we don't wanna catch the tree on fire or cause harm to the tree branches that are just over a foot off the side of the spill bowl. So phenomenal job and good idea, Brian, on doing that. We just pulled out the fire insert, put a piece of fabric in, added a little bit of dirt, threw in a hosta right there, some few boulders and some ground cover right there. So it's gonna look awesome after it gets established and that ground cover starts hiding those edges of that spill bowl. So we got a little two and a half watt color changing light, uplighting that spout of water. And then as you come around this peninsula here, we have those waterfalls, which look absolutely stunning from inside the house. We have the Biofall 6000 sitting up top there and filtering this entire pond. And that waterfall off this patio is 15 inches. So you can tell as earlier in the video, we were talking on how low that Biofalls looked, but that waterfall looks pretty dramatic considering we have three drops and a spill bowl off that waterfall. So I love, love, love that spill bowl nestled away into that corner that kind of just breaks up that edge and that rocks that we always do up in the waterfall area. So yeah, that looks absolutely stunning. As we always say, if this is the end of the video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Please, I want to see the comments down in the section. And no, I do not want to see another comment on that I deserve a raise. We've been seeing that comment a lot lately. It's kind of getting annoying, on my part at least. So hopefully you guys can comment some other comments out there. Tell us what you guys enjoyed about this feature. Let us know what you guys think about that spill bowl. I know I really enjoy that spill bowl. The one with that plant, this is something that we've uh, never done before. So it looks absolutely stunning. That's Let's get a count on how many times I've said stunning in this video, because I know it's been a lot. Other than that, please feel free to um, leave your uh, reviews out in the comment section. Tell us what you liked, what you didn't like, what we can improve, what you guys want us to see. So hope you guys have a fantastic day. Enjoy the rest of the day.